it's Jo here, founder of Freckles, and in this episode, it's our last one in our series, and it's all about Ofsted, the wondrous Ofsted that is there. So, what even is Ofsted? Well, Ofsted is a regulatory board to ensure that childcare providers are up to their standards. And what this means is that if your company that you work for has a childcare voucher scheme or some other childcare scheme, um, the chances are that is going to be linked to Ofsted, which means that if you have a nanny, you can pay your nanny using that money that you get from your childcare voucher scheme. So, for example, if we go back to nurseries, so when your kid's at nursery, often you're able to pay with, with childcare vouchers, and that's because nurseries have a legal, legal requirement to be registered with Ofsted. As a nanny, it's not a legal requirement, you don't have to be registered with Ofsted, um, and so it's an optional thing, but you need to have it in order to be able to access those funds from those childcare vouchers. So if you don't currently use childcare vouchers and you are intrigued to know more, speak to your HR department at work and they should be able to tell you whether the company provides a scheme. It's quite common now for, for a lot of companies to do it and it's basically a tax advantage. So certain money is put away and you can choose the amount into the childcare scheme um, that, they, that the company uses and it's taken out pre-tax. So there's normally a tax saving on that um, and so you get you know, your money just goes up a little bit further. So definitely look into it. Now if you have that pot of money there you need to, and you want to start using it for your nanny, you need to get your nanny Ofsted registered. Which is not difficult but it's a bit slow and there's a lot of hoop jumping. So I'm going to help you out and we'll figure out how we get through this right now. So the key things to think about are, first of all, Ofsted takes up to 12 weeks. I would err more towards the 12 weeks than the up to bit. So allow 12 weeks, which is a good three months from the moment you submit your application. And that's providing everything goes according to plan from submission. However, there's pre-work to getting your submission ready. So the pre-work requires certain criteria, which we'll go through, and you need to make sure that that is all ready, and then it's three months, 12 weeks, three months from then. Um, so I would definitely allow about four full months to get that through. Some people have had it back faster than that, but some have had it back a lot slower than that. Um, there is a principle to go with this, which has all the information around it, and it's our Ofsted pack. It's a biggie. It will really help you go through. We've done it. We've done it before. We know how to do it, um, and it will help you. Now, the key thing to point out is this is your nanny's responsibility. She's the only person, she or he, are the only person or people that can access this and do this. Um, so you can support them and help them, um, but it's worth knowing that they, ultimately, they need to do it. Um, so, first thing to think about is, does it cost me money? Yes. Um, so it costs £103 a year at the moment and it has to be renewed annually. So what criteria do they need? Well there are four key things that the nanny needs to have. The first is an enhanced DBS check that's on the update service, um, which we'll go through in a little bit. Uh, public liability insurance, they need to have a six hour paediatric first aid certificate which is in date and if they don't have lots of experience working with children um, or any formal qualifications, they need to complete what's called a common core skills course, all right? So the enhanced DBS check that's on the update service, it's in their name and when it's on the update service, they have to do that within 19 days of the issue date. So say your nanny's got a DBS at the moment, fantastic, when do they get it issued and is it on the update service? So how do you find out? Well, you need to go and check and um, at a, at a website address and we will put that in the pack so you go in you log in and you check um, the reference number that they have on their certificate and hopefully that'll come up and it'll be like woohoo she's on the update service and then you'll be dreaming um if not then the chances are they need a new one and this is why i say allow an extra month or four weeks um to get all this pre-work sorted out because um, generally DBSs take three to four weeks to come back once they have been sent off. So you can Google it and you can find the providers online, you can go to agencies, you can go to umbrella companies to get that sorted. But what that means is that they need to get a new DBS which costs around £60 and then they have to pay £13 um, a year to put it on the update service. It has to go onto the update service within 19 days of issue. 
Public liability insurance, um, that starts at about £65. There are some providers, we'll put those on the links, Morton Michael, Nanny Insure, that kind of thing. I highly recommend that regardless of Ofsted, to be honest, because I think it's worth having. Um, and they can get that sorted relatively easily. It's one of those things with insurance you can call and it's sorted in the day. Um, the next thing to think about is your paediatric first aid, aid course. They need to have a six hour course as the minimum. Um, so we run six hour and 12 hour courses and sometimes you'll see if you're doing your research that the 12 hour course is suitable for Ofsted. Now that's because Ofsted also um, regulate nurseries and childminders. And for those providers that is a legal requirement they have to have Ofsted, but they have to do a 12 hour paediatric first aid course. As a nanny, you can qualify for your Ofsted registration with only, when you only have a six hour. Um, and the six hours of practical, 12 hours can be two, set, two days worth of practicals or six hours online and six hours practical, which is what I would recommend. Cost-wise, that's about £60. Um, and then the last thing to think about is the Common Core Skills course. So if they haven't got any formal nanny experience previously, or they haven't got much, um, then it's definitely worth you looking into getting your Common Core Skills course done. Um, that basically is just some formal uh, proof that they've got, ex they've got experience and they understand what is going on um, with children, basically. Um, if they've gone to college and they've done a childcare uh, qualification, NPQ, cache, anything like that, they've worked in a nursery, and if they've got you know a few years of nanny experience under their belt, then they will be fine, they won't need that. Um, if you're concerned at all, I would err on the side of caution and just get it done so that your offset application doesn't get returned. Once you've got all of those things and you've got photos and copies of all of that, then, I, then you need to go head over to Ofsted, and we'll give you the link as well. And you create an account, and this is your nanny, they create the account, and they need to complete what's called a CR1 form. The CR1 form is um, the form specifically for nannies, and it requires quite a lot of information, but it's fine. Now the key thing to remember is Ofsted, just for the sake of being complicated and confusing, don't refer to a nanny at any stage in the Ofsted process as a nanny. They call them a home child carer. So they are interchangeable terms, but you'll only ever see home child carer um, when you're looking at Ofsted stuff, all right? So don't worry, don't let it throw you. Um, so you're completing the CR1 form, and it only takes about 20 minutes, really, if you've done all your pre-work, and you need to fill it in, um, so they need addresses, that, and the addresses need to be consistent with their DBS address, um, so that's something to, to note. And you have to be able to tick the box that said DBS um, on update service and then submit your certificate number. So it has to be done, yes I've got a paediatric first aid, yes I am common core skills certified, yes I've got my public liability. And they won't ask for it, for, um, for it at this stage, but they will ask for it at a later date. Um, so it's definitely worth, to, uh, what, you know, make sure you've got it sorted, I always think. Um, you then submit it and send it off, and normally it's about two to four weeks later, you will get an email, the nanny will get an email, um, so they need to keep checking their emails, um, and from Ofsted requiring the payment of the £103. Now, this is not, this is not guarantee you will get it, um, but it's a pretty good indicator, because if you haven't completed something, it will have flagged up and you've got an email back saying this isn't sufficient or something like that. So at least you've got to that stage. Um, you need to make sure you, um, they then pay, um, and the payment terms we'll talk about a bit at the end, but so you now at this point you would make the £103 transfer, and then it goes back to Ofsted, and they carry on assessing it, and they keep going with all the checks. Hopefully then, within the 12 week time frame from start to finish, um, from when you sent off your CR1 form, you will get, or the nanny will get an email saying, congratulations, you have made your Ofsted registration, and they then get a certificate. They get a number, um, and that number is what's key to allowing them to access your childcare voucher fund, all right? So, they need to do all of that. Now, if you can, you can hit roadblocks and stumbling blocks with the, um, with it if you haven't done the pre-work and you haven't made sure everything is sorted in advance. So I really would make sure, just add on an extra four weeks to make sure, you know, add on that time to make sure you tick box everything at the, at the beginning and then send it off because else it returns and trust me, it takes forever if that happens and you have to go back to the beginning and making sure things are congruent. So um, like the addresses and like the contact details and 
just attention to detail is really important at, at this point. So when they get their, um, their registration number through and you all celebrate with joy and relief, um, that, that number, so for example if your company used the childcare voucher company, say Eden Red, um, then um, your nanny, Sophie Smith, let's say, is able to take her registration number, her officer registration number, go to Eden Red, create an account and um, then she is able to, through a varying um, ways access the money you are basically able to pay her using the money you have in the childcare voucher fund and until unless somebody has an Ofsted number they know you're not able to use that money so it can only be sent to somebody with an Ofsted registration number so that's either your nanny now she's got it or a nursery, childminder, something like that. Some holiday clubs accept them, some, some can't. And um, for a lot of people, you know, going through the processes, it's slow, it's expensive um, and things, but it's really worth doing if it's gonna make you, if you're gonna save way more than that um, over, over time. So there are costs to think about. In terms of who pays for them, uh, that's quite a tricky one. I tend to say half and half, um, because really the, the family are seeing a lot of the benefit. Um, and the car has to do, or the nanny has to go through a lot of the work, but ultimately it is good for them as well. So I would suggest they pay for their paediatric first aid and their, um, their paediatric first aid and their public liability. And if they require a new DBS or comical skills um, and the registration, then potentially that goes down to the client um, because they wouldn't necessarily need those otherwise unless they were going for the offset registration. But have that conversation and see how you get on. It is complicated, but it's not too difficult. So make sure you head over and download the printable and the offset pack to go with this so you have access to all of that and you get yourself through it and you don't go through the stresses that I've been in before. If you have any questions or there's anything you think we can do to help, then as always, just send us an email, comment or get in touch and we will do what we can to, to help you um, and we will be in touch soon. So thank you so much. I hope you found this useful and do download the pack because honestly, it will revolutionise your Ofsted life.